Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah I wanted to quickly discuss something very important and the reason being because of a problem that we have amongst many of our youth who either have some knowledge or absolutely have no knowledge and what happens with this especially in the day of technology there's a lack of trust in the people of knowledge a lot of times people undermine scholars they undermine the uh the tulab al-ilm and the du'at and they undermine themselves with their own contradictions and this is a type of sickness that needs to be ailed so i just want as a uh, a form of tarbiyah for ourselves that we have to remind ourselves and be humble and realize as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said adam all the children of adam make mistakes or make sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent so i'm doing this video because a particular individual and, and i've seen it countless times commented uh about an issue we just made a video regarding the issue of takfir and i took the path of following the ayat in the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fasal ahli dhikrin kuntum la ask the people of knowledge if you don't know because that is not the place for a beginning student of knowledge and for the general muslims in general and even for some of the scholars to get into the issues of takfir because the takfir is a very complex sharia uh sharia judgment and with this i know i remember uh, a beautiful statement of sheikh abdulaziz raji very simple statement where he said that takfir with tafsik with tabdi' maybe not in that order are sharia rulings it's very simple uh, and you know that's not for everyone to get involved and and many of the major scholars they speak about this and throughout way before them and greater ulama than them have spoken about these issues that it's not for the lay persons to get involved but unfortunately we live in a cut and paste time where people cut fatawa of certain scholars and say you know and have all kind of claims with it and say this is the truth this is the only way I spoke the only reason I even deal with some of those issues of tech theater sometimes is because I spent several years of my life dedicated studying that issue with scholars and asking scholars many many questions countless questions about these these issues of tech theater and the bottom line is tech theater as as we mentioned is a sharia ruling that means that there is a judge who makes these issues of tech theater uh, a scholar they make a general judgment takfir mutlaq a general wasf a description of takfir but let's try to stay on on point so the point i am making is not simply a matter of cutting and pasting uh uh issues and fatawa about a particular issue and then trying to force people to take your view or force people to make a hukum or say people have made mistakes or errors and this and that because you have one fatwa and maybe you haven't even studied the issue and know the complexity of the issue the complexity of making a judgment on a particular individual and the complexity in the details of the differences of the ulama regarding tafsil and so this brings up the second point i want to mention is that many masail and ilm especially when it comes to making a hukum on individuals and and even the details about many issues for example the issue of takfir the scholars will have uh the scholars of ahl sunnah not ahl bidah we're not even talking about ahl bidah we're talking about ahl sunnah qadim wa hadith in the past up to now have some details in which they what they differ over by right. and with that being the case i'll give you one example there's the issue of faham al hujja wa uh qiyam al hujja this is a mas'ala daqiq this is a very uh detailed issue faham al hujja means that a person understands the proofs that are being presented to them 
Qiyam al hujja means that the hujja, the proof, has been given to them. And again, this is these are issues, Masail Daqiq, that the scholars differ over. The scholars of Ahl Sunnah, you'll even find that the ulama were, are referred to as the A'imma uh, Da'wah, which means the Najdiya scholars, the scholars from the time of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab, his grandsons, and and so on and so forth, up on time, up, up until the time of Bin Baz and what have you, that they differed over this issue. But yet, we don't know how to deal with differences. These a'imma differed, but we know the truth because we are a YouTube paster and we, we know the truth. Wallah and Mr. An. So, the third point I want to mention, a to fillah, to be as brief as possible, is another important thing when we try to apply fatwa, like someone mentioned just recently about taqlid, and I don't have time to go into every and comment on everything that someone comments, but I disagree with the commenter. And plain and simple, I will deal with it in the future because it's an issue and mia, and instead of them saying, you know, that yes, there's a difference, or going in and un trying to understand what I'm saying from Ben Uthaymin, not from me, from Ben Uthaymin, and men qabluhu, they just present one side of the issue and that's the end. So it lets me know either they haven't studied the issue to know that there's more details and there's more thing, and we'll talk about that issue in detail much later. So one important issue is a qa'idah that the ulama mentioned, a hukm ala shayfarin ala tasawrihi, that when you make a judgment on something, a part of that judgment is that you have a correct understanding of that issue. So whenever someone presents a question to one of the scholars or whoever they're trying to take knowledge from, there has to be a correct tasawr, there has to be a proper understanding of the issue for that alam or that mufti to make a judgment based on what the person is asking. And this is why it's important to have a good intention when you're asking a question if you want the truth not to just test someone, not to try to get someone to differ with someone else or whatever the various reasons that people uh, ask questions and try to get a hukum, a general hukum to apply it to someone in their country to say they're a mubtadiya or say they're a kafir or whatever the case may be. But anyway, going back to the qa'idah, hukum al shayfar and al-tasawari. So, to have a, so when an alim makes a, a, a judgment or a scholar or a talib al-ilm or whatever, that they must have a correct understanding of the mas'ala. So that's why, another reason why it's very important, and I'm not ahlan for that, I'm not in that position. I'm, like I said, a beginning student of knowledge. I may have put in years, but I'm still really just a beginning student of knowledge that I don't and will not answer those types of questions. But I will refer that to the people of Ahl al-Ilm because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ask the people of knowledge if you don't understand, if you don't know. Because these are very daqiq masail. And especially in the issue we were talking about, this could actually have an effect on people's marriage, you know, divorce and separation and children. Do you want to be responsible for that? Just because you pasted, you cut and paste the fatwa? Many people before us made many mistakes in educations and breaking up marriages because they said so-and-so was a hisbi. This one, your husband's a hisbi, divorce him. Subhanallah. These are hukum shari, and these should go to ahl al-ilm. And they know how to look at the masalim and mufasid, the, the benefits and the harms in making these judgments. Uh, so it's very important, uh, those important points. Very briefly, the issue of takfir, as we said, is a complex issue. As far as making takfir on a specific individual, first, the first uh, shart, and you can takfir bi amri yaqini la mudkhal li dhan fihi. The first issue of takfir, or shart, or condition before making takfir, is that the issue that is being talked about, that this person is supposedly done of kufr, is that it is something which is sure, not something which is a doubtful issue. Meaning that it's a clear act of kufr. There's no... A doubt about it because some people they make takfir over issues that are doubtful or something which is not certain or something which the scholars disagree over if it's even kufr or not. So this is why it's very important. That's the first condition. The second condition, Dalalatun Sus Ala Enal Fel or Kaul Kufr al Akbar. 
that there also should be uh, text from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and or and or the ijma of the scholars that the and we're referring to the Nasus, we're talking about Kitab al Sunnah, that the action or the statement is the major disbelief. The third condition, Qasd al Kufr fil A'mal Muhtamila lil Kufr wa Adamihi. So when it's an issue which there's doubt that it, it you know it could be Kufr what they mean, and it also could not be Kufr, you know, when there's doubt about the person's uh, the the actual issue that if he meant this, then this is takes him out of the fold of Islam. If he meant this with that same statement, then this is not not take him out of the fold of Islam. When it's muhtamila, when there's a um, uh, ambiguity, then uh, the intention of the individual must be looked at. That's another condition that the scholars of Islam laid down. Not me. But the scholars of Islam. The fourth condition, Qiyamul Hajjah al Ma'ayyin. So when we make a Sharia ruling, because this particular individual gave me some pay, cut and paste fatwa of Bin Baz, I didn't listen to it, I don't have time, because I've studied the issue for years. Kalama, Bin Baz, Fozan, you know, our contemporary Imam Muqbil, how many ulama? And then before them, Ibn al Qayyim, Ibn, you know, the Imam al Diamond, Imam al Dawah. And min salaf salaf al salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim. I studied this issue, and I sat with ulama that have done their PhD, and the Mufti of Saudi Arabia has made munakisha, and and said it was mumtaz, like Sheikh Doctor Fidila to Doctor Abu Salah al Afghani, Muhammad uh, uh, Hashim, half of the law to one of our scholars in Kuwait, and I sat with him personally, have countless recordings about issues of takfir when he was doing his PhD. So it isn't like we just picked up these issues and we just ran with them. So it's important that we Qiyam al Hajja. Uh, then I want to quickly mention the Mu'ana Takfir because this is where the issue came, uh, part of the issue. Part of the things which prohibit making Takfir on a specific individual, and I didn't want this to be a dars about Takfir, but anyhow. The first thing is a jahl. So if the person, uh, one of the excuses is a person, sometimes it can be the excuse of ignorance. Sometimes it can be new to Islam, whatever the case may be. How many countless examples can we think of new Muslims that we know, especially us who came to Islam and probably even fell into it ourselves, uh, certain issues. We were new to Islam, but bi'idnillah ta'ala, la shak in many of those cases, they have udr bi jahil. They're new to Islam. No one explained to them anything. They didn't have any knowledge. They just tried their best sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to practice Islam. And then they fell into an act of kufr or a statement of kufr, not knowing, you know. So they've udr bi jahil, and then someone has to establish qiyam al hajjah upon the person. And, and, and faham al hajjah, as those ulama that say faham al hajjah is one of the conditions that they understand the proof. That's another issue. We're not going to get into it. Another uh, thing which prohibits making takfir is if a person makes uh, an issue out of a khatha. For example, sometimes a slip of the tongue, as in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he mentioned the man who lost his riding animal, and then he was so happy, he said, Oh Allah, he raised his hands to the sky when his riding beast came out of the hot desert and he was dirty and having difficulty. He said, Oh Allah, I'm your Lord and you are my servant. And he did that as out of happiness. Do we make takfir of him? Isn't that, that's kufr? Of course it's a statement of kufr. But he is not a kafir. Why? He has an excuse of making a mistake of the tongue. It's a slip of the tongue. The third point, which deals with what we're talking about, is ta'wil. And in the question that was presented, they presented a question about an individual who, according to his understanding, according to... Uh, uh, his understanding and his, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, his understanding of the text, that he understands that what he is doing is a halal. So he makes istihlal, he falls into that because he believes that to be lawful. And perhaps even drinking alcohol. He may believe it to be lawful. We don't know any other details. Is this person a fairly new Muslim? He embraced Islam. He lives in a place where there's no ulama. We don't know any other issues about this. So we refrain from that because that's not our job. 
Wilalalham. That's for Ahl al Ilm, and that's for the, uh, the, the judges to make those things. So, ta'wil, misunderstanding, misinterpretation, is also an excuse. And I want to make tathabbat, or I want to affirm this by one beautiful statement of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Qala Shaykh Islam, Lama istahalla ta'ifa min sahaba wa tabi'un, wa tabi'in, qadama ibn mad'un, wa ashabahu sharb al khamr. وظنوا أنها تبع لمن عمل صالحا على ما فهمه من آيات المائدة. So Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, when the times look at this, this is a Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, and the Tabi'een. He said, when the some of the Sahaba, a group from the Sahaba and a group from the Tabi'een as well, made istihlal. They fell into making something, making something was impermissible, permissible, which was drinking alcohol. And this was according to their understanding, as Sheikh Al-Islam had been saying to me, they had misinterpretation of the ayat. They thought that it was permissible for the one who does righteous deeds. And they were they thought this from the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we kitab al-kareem, Laysa alladina amanu amalu salihati junahun fima. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, it is not, there is no blame on, the, on, on those who do righteous deeds uh, f with regards to what they eat and they partake. So that group of Sahaba and Tabi'een, they thought that that meant, meant that they do, since you know they're doing righteous deeds, that it's permissible what they eat. And what does that include? That includes drinking alcohol. This is what they understood from the ayat. Does that make them disbelievers? Of course not. So this is the point. This was them. So what about less than them? And I could read so much kalam. I hope that that is sufficient to kind of touch on the issue. But I know many people, their hearts, you know, are, are not necessarily open. They want to debate. They want to argue. They'll come with a new article. Instead of dealing with these issues on how the Salaf Asadi did and that there are differences of view around some masail daqiq you know some detailed issues people want to make everything black and white walillahilham and this is the ni'mah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and the ni'mah that ahlus sunnah has mercy for one another and they don't rush to make takfir they don't rush to make tabdi' you know to call people innovators and they don't rush to make tafsik on people but they try to you know they they and and especially about differences they don't rush and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that wasn't correct was from myself and the shaitan and the last thing I want to mention also Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said وَلَا يُكَفْرَ الشَّخْصِ الْمَعَيِّنِ حَتَّى تَقُمْ عَلَيَّ الْحُجَّةِ كَمَا تَقَدَّمْ كَمَنْ Jahada wujuba salat wa zakat wa stah wa astahil al khamar wa zina. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said also, he said, and uh, do not declare takfir of a person, a specific individual, uh, until you've given them the proof, you've established the hujjah, you've established the proof. As we mentioned prior, so he mentions this all throughout his Mijmu'a Fatawa. He says, similar to the one who rejects the obligation of Salat. Now, everyone should know that. We say that's ma'lum min adin bidurura. But, but Shaykh al-Islam is, is mentioning that you have to establish the proof to them still. You have to give them evidence still. Was zakat, the one who denies uh, given zakat. Wa astahlal. And they make khamr, alcohol, drinking alcohol, and committing adultery even, permissible. He said, establish the proof. So what about, what about you? Which, which, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to go with Ahl al-Ilm or just blind follow whatever you feel and then force others to take your view? Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.